Welcome back to Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. This is going to be episode two. Unfortunately, when we first started recording this episode, we had some recording issues. So we're definitely going to uh, came back to the start to try to show you guys exactly what we did, where we went, and all that good stuff. Now, on top of that, uh, we went ahead and we messed with the uh, visual settings. So it should be even higher quality than it was last time. And not only that, but uh, it was already really good looking when ported to the PC. But we went in ahead, messed with some of the files, and got it looking even better. So hopefully you guys can see that. And you guys can appreciate the high def quality for what it is. Now, apparently, uh, one thing to note is this was the very first port that the company ever did uh, past any other console, any system, anything like that. So for a company's very first port, I think they did a very good job, other than the fact that the control scheme on the keyboard, like I've said, is really wonky. It doesn't work at all how it should. And I truly believe it would be a, per a truly perfect port, if not for the way that the keyboard controls. Like a monkey on a tricycle. It just it, do it doesn't go anywhere you want it to go. It doesn't do anything you want it to do. It's just very uncooperational. And I'll shake your hand if you can prove that that's not a real word. Now, uh, the first thing we did last video is we came down here into the graveyard and we ran around past all these skeletons here that would kill us. And we picked up all the items in here. Uh, I'm not 100% certain on if I'm going to use those or not, but we picked them up. Uh, I guess just because I can. So we did that and we came back. And we decided to start heading up towards Undead Berg, the very first area of the game where you have to go to ring the very first Bell of Awakening. So let me rest here, reset all the enemies. Hmm. We also, I'm sorry, right off the bat we also leveled up. We just went ahead and put those points into Dexterity because I want a very dexterous character. So we did went ahead and did that, and now we're going to work our way towards our very first bonfire of the game that isn't really just handed to us. So let's go ahead and start heading that way again. Now, mm, excuse me, uh, been a little bit sick, so bear with me if I sound weird or if something's going on, but I believe that we did go ahead and take a pro uh, stab at the problem of the uh, audio recording that we had last time, and definitely I believe we took that into consideration, got it all ironed out and fixed it all, so there shouldn't be any more audio problems. Alright, so down there on the bridge is a special ring called the Ring of Sacrifice, the Ray Ring of Sacrifice. Now, what that allows you to do is it allows you to, when you die, lose nothing upon death. So your souls, your humanity, you'll keep it all uh, when you die. But the ring is broken. We pick that up. Uh, and to get to that, you have to jump across the little chasm there. And when you jump, to do that, you can hold the circle button on the PS3 to run and tap it again while running to jump. I believe it's the B button on 360, but I haven't played on 360, but I believe that is the correct button mapping and assigning in my head. Go that right, and it didn't drop anything for us, because it's a dirty bastard, it's a rat, it's hoarding everything. I'm a pack rat, being ridiculous. Alright, so here we go, Undead Bird. Welcome, ladies and gents. All right, you'll notice I have a habit of walking around with my shield up, and uh, that's a good habit to get into, simply because I'm gonna fucking die here, and that is a, a big reason, because these guys like to ambush you. And this game has a really big habit of making it to where even in areas where you are over-equipped for or in better condition than the game would really require you to be in to be in that area. Even if you have better equipment than you need to have, anything like that, the game still has a way of fucking you if you're not careful. So always be sure you're staying on your guard when you are running through and around any area that you either haven't been to or that you just haven't been to in a while. Because not knowing where anything is can really kill you in this game, and I don't appreciate it. Alright, now, the very first time you come through here, and you come down, uh, a big dragon swoops down, lands on this, and flies off. That's what you missed. Other than that, here we are. Let's see how this guy died. That's not very interesting. Looks like he stood there and took some arrows. Alright, now, that being said, there is a sniper right up there 
with a crossbow. And I believe you can see him. He's standing right up there on top of the building. Uh, he will ruin your day and just make you have a bad time if you aren't careful with how you approach him. Now, the biggest way to do that, I believe, in my opinion, is to get the backstabs in this area. Simply because when you're in a backstab, when you are doing the animation for it, you are invulnerable for the animation. So anytime that you're through that animation for a backstab, you cannot be hit, you cannot be damaged. So it's definitely uh, worthwhile to kind of do it the way I did it here. I, I kind of messed it up on the fact of getting the backstab on uh, a couple of the guys back here. But other than that, I think we're doing okay. Now these are shield knights, and they use spears. Of the, This variation is going to use spears. Now, the one thing I really like about them is they control... Uh, in the AI, the way I would like it to be handled, the way I would like it to be controlled, simply because they're just enemies that I know if I had a shield, that's the way I would be with it. I would I would constantly turtle, <clears throat> as I do when I'm walking around. You've all seen it happen. And they, they like to circle with you. They never really give you the chance to open them up and take their life, do a lot of damage. So you really got to create your own openings, which I think is just genius. I really like the fact that they did that. Now, the next thing we did was we came down here, and somebody died here. Looks like he tried to fight the merchant. Now, this is our merchant, our very first one of the game. Still keeping your marbles all together? Then go ahead, don't be a nitwit. Never hurts to splurge when your days are numbered. <laughs> And he is one of the creepiest guys you will ever meet in the game. Uh, what we did was we did go ahead. And I'm going to get this residence key. And I might get that bottomless box. But we picked up a scimitar. I don't think he has anything else that we want here. Hmm. No, I have the orange soapstone. Let's go ahead and pick that up. That will allow us to write our own little messages, and I'll take the bottomless box, why not? I don't like carrying around a bunch of stuff I don't need to carry with me. Now, what that orange soapstone allows us to do is if we come in here and it's equipped already. Alright, so if we do this, we go through, it lets us put down messages. So we can write a message here, we can write messages as well. So blank ahead, be wary of blank, try blank, uh, you know what? Let's uh, try attacking. You know, it's fairly common knowledge for those of you who don't know that this merchant here, if you attack him and kill him, he has a unique weapon for the game called the Uchigatna. Now, that is a large katana-style weapon that ends up being very, very useful uh, far into the late game. So a lot of people like to go ahead and kill him and take that weapon right off the bat. And he will drop to you the residence key and the orange guide and soapstone. So the things that you really need to get from him, he will drop. So you're not going to ruin your game by attacking him and killing him. I just, I don't want to do that yet. Because I don't know if I'm going to be around here any, any longer. And if I am, uh, I would like to really have a merchant to buy things from if I need things. I don't know if I will need things. But if I need things, he's the guy to get the things from. Yes. If I say things a few more times, I think I might break, break a record, but uh, who knows, who knows. Alrighty, now if we come down here, we get access to our first ranged weapon, unless you started as a hunter, which I believe starts with a bow, but I really want to say I'm not sure about that. So we'll climb this ladder. Oh, excuse me. And here, I believe we've got some throwing knives. And then if we jump from here, again, uh, hold circle and then tap to jump, we will get ourselves a fancy new light crossbow. And there it is. Alrighty. Now to actually progress and get our very first bonfire for the area. Right up here. Now 
Now, every time you rest at a bonfire, the enemies for the area are reset. So everything that we just killed is going to respawn, but that is okay. Because you always respawn at the last bonfire, bonfire, sorry, that you rested at. I, for some reason, wanted to say bottomless box there. Now, every last one you rested at is where you're going to go ahead and end up when you respawn. So let's go ahead and take all this out. Need to adjust my inventory here. There we go. Just unequip those so I can put them in my bottomless box. Now, <clears throat> the game is really, really big on leaving you to your own devices, especially when it comes to uh, respawning, where to go, and all that good stuff. The, the game doesn't hold your hand and send you to an area that you need to be to, or that you need to be in, rather. So anytime you're going through an area, uh, you could need to be there or you could definitely be going somewhere that you haven't uh, been leveled up enough or you don't have the right equipment to be in. Uh, that's fairly common and when it happens there's not a lot you can do about it other than uh, do your best to get out of there. Uh, so if that happens to you I apologize but we're definitely going to try to keep that to a minimum here. Um, we do like to progress a little bit differently through the game than some people do. And because of that, we will end up in a few areas that are not necessarily, um, I guess you'd say where we need to be right off the bat. But that is a-okay. Where am I fat rolling from, I guess? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just fat roll with the uh, scimitar. Now, there's three different rolls. There's the fast roll when you are at less than, I believe, 25% of your equip load. There is the mid-roll when you are anywhere from 25 to 50%. And then anytime you are over 50% of your equip load, I believe you are doing the fat roll. Which is unfortunate, but it is very slow. And it's more of a flop than a roll. So throughout the game, we're definitely going to try to keep ourselves at the fast roll. Because we don't like to flop it anywhere. But we're gonna definitely going to try to keep that going. Now, the next area we need to get to is up here across the Firebomb Bridge. Oh, one of those. Great. Alright, now these guys are absolutely jerk faces. And they're going to try to kill us with these firebombs. And those will do a lot of damage if we let them. So, the only way to go is all the way through into the three-man ambush. So we're definitely going to try, there we go, see, the invincibility frames right there, that's what we want to get in here. Especially when you are being ambushed, that is um, just a necessity in order to not die, in my opinion. And of course, you know, I, I, he says while he's dying. Alright, so, there we go, got behind him. Alright, now... Definitely try to be a little bit more careful than I was. I got hit in the back too many times in there uh, to be comfortable with. And of course, that makes me lose my Estus, which is, of course, our healing item. We don't want to lose any of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so if we come in here to this house, there is a chest in the back here that we can get into that is going to have, I believe, fire bombs, but I'm not 100% on that. <clears throat> there it is, more black fire bombs. Which is going to make a uh, section here coming up uh, fairly easy for us. So let's go ahead and get that done. There is an ambush up here. The guy in the back has firebombs. We want to get behind him as soon as possible and go for the backstab. There we go. Now... In order to do a little tactic that we like to do here, we're going to have to come up to the ladder and clear this off as soon as possible. Of course, the faster you walk, the easier it is for an enemy to detect you. So if you want to get good backstabs, you're going to want to try to walk as slowly and as purposely, purposefully as possible. Uh, just definitely try to keep it slow and steady. That way, they, you're not just uh, alerting everybody to your presence when you're trying to get... A backstab going for yourself. 
taking a little bit more damage than I would like to here. It's absolutely uh, disconcerting. Because I just, I don't want to be taking as much damage as I am. Now, if we use the residence key here, I don't believe the master key actually works for that door. I believe you have to have the residence key. Or no, I'm sorry. The master key works for that door. There's a door later that you have to have the residence key for. We get this gold pine resin. And what that does is that will allow us to apply lightning effects to our weapon. And that will come in handy again here shortly. The game has a habit of, especially in chests, giving you things that are very handy very soon. So always definitely do your best to pay attention to what's going on there. Now the scimitar has a separate set of moves for the kick. Instead of doing a kick, you do more of a flourish with your weapon. It looks a little something like that. And it's nice, but it doesn't really toss an enemy off balance the way you would want to. If they're using a shield. Just continue our trek through the berg. Another thing to mention are these guys with swords and shields are absolute assholes and you want to be really careful when you're fighting them because they have a habit more than any other regular enemy I've fought in the game so far to end a life quickly if you're not really paying attention to them. If you don't have the, the strategies down to get past their shield and you're not really working on backstabs, you're not too great at the backstabs yet, uh, that shield can really just ruin your day. Do that. Alrighty. Now let's equip these firebombs. And down here is one of the toughest enemies in the game. These are spread throughout the game, uh, I want to say fairly regularly, but at the same time, they're not uh, around every other corner. These are Black Knights. They're not necessarily a mini boss, but they might as well be because they are big, tough, and they hit a lot harder than anything else you would want to really hit you. So we're going to go ahead and uh, try to firebomb this guy to death. And, of course, it's just going to go through the graphics because that's what our firebombs do. Yeah, we got those ghost bombs. Yeah. Ah, uh, there he is. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run from him because he's bigger, faster, and stronger than me. Oh, man. Oh, shit, run. 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 Get to the ladder. Get to the ladder. Oh, go, go, get, get out of there. All right, we made it. And hopefully he will follow us up here. God, I could have sworn he was behind me. There he is. Now, if we're up here, the Black Knight cannot climb ladders. So, what he's going to do is he's going to sit there and feel sorry for himself. He's like, oh, I can't climb ladders. My mom never taught me how to swim. Oh, I can't climb ladders either because I'm, I'm bad at life. And because he can't climb ladders, he's going to stay down there and feel bad about himself and cry while we throw firebombs at him and kill him. So, this is this is my, uh, my strategy for it. Doesn't have to be yours, but this is mine. I, I never like to take these guys on in a head-on fight. It's it's just a bad idea for me and, and probably for you too. You can get backstabs on them, but they're not... I wouldn't count on it. There you can see he had his shield up when we hit him, so we only did 21 damage instead of the 73 that we were doing earlier. Oh, look at that. We got the Black Knight Sword. Oh, man. Now, the Black Knight Sword is absolutely one of my favorite weapons in the game. Unfortunately, I didn't build towards that in this this uh, series of videos. So I highly, highly uh, believe that there's not going to be a time that I use that. But it is one of the most useful weapons in the game, in my opinion. It swings very fast and does a lot of damage if you have the correct stats to wield it. Now, I don't know if we spoke about the roll in this video. I believe I did say a little bit of something on the fat roll and all that good stuff. Now... Apparently, there's a guy that has discovered that there are indeed four different fast rolls. There, if you are anywhere from 0 to 1% equip rate, so if you're, you know, if uh, absolutely nothing equipped, or you have maybe one pound out of 100 pounds that you can carry, you will do what is called, what he calls the ultra fast roll, or the uh, fastest, rather. And that is going to be a ridiculously fast roll. Now, anywhere from... 0 0.1, I'm sorry, it's anywhere from 0 to 0 0.1. Now, anywhere from 0 0.1 to 16.6 .6 is going to be ultra fast. You do an ultra fast roll rather than the fastest roll. Then from 16.6 .6 to 16.7, I guess it is, is going to be 
your somewhat fast roll. And then of course you have your traditional fast roll that is anywhere from 16.7 to 25% equip rate. Now, uh, this guy went above and beyond to meticulously research that. And if I honestly had off the top of my head, the name of the video, I would absolutely give you props and uh, send you over there so you can actually watch it for yourself. It's actually quite interesting. And he's promising to do an entire a uh, series of videos on the science behind a lot of the actions in Dark Souls, which is actually really nifty. And uh, if you're a big fan of the game, it's something that's really fun to watch. Now, for us right now, instead of going the traditional route to fight the very first... Uh, nah, I guess he is a boss. I like to think of him more as a mini-boss. But instead of going to him right away, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and get uh, one of the nicest rings in the game that you can get unfortunately it is quite a bit of a fight to get it so i might die a few times in the process but hey if i die it's definitely going to be uh entertaining for everybody else but unfortunately i'm gonna have to call it here and next time we will start off with trying to get the ring that is really going to help us throughout the game so don't forget if you liked it uh, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I know we did have one guy comment last time about how he was having frame rate issues. If you are having frame rate issues trying to play the game, uh, either drop down your resolutions or sometimes you do get a problem with your AMD uh, drivers and resources. Now, if that's happening, what you want to do is you want to clean your system of your old uh, drivers and all that, and you want to update those. And that has been reported to truly help out with the frame rate of the game. So if you're having those problems, do that. Um, we will try to help out everybody we can with the comments and all that. So again, like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next time on Dark Souls Prepare to Die. Y'all have a great one. We'll see you next time. Bye.